after studying this module we shall be able to understand the purpose of memorandum of association no various clauses of memorandum of association understand the procedure for alteration of various clauses of memorandum of association and learn the doctrine of ultra virus let us initiate this topic by studying about memorandum of association commonly known as moa Memorandum of Association is the main document of a company which defines its objects. It lays down the fundamental conditions upon which alone the company is allowed to be formed. It may be termed as the charter or constitution of the company since it governs the relationship of the company with the outside world. according to section 2 subsection 56 of the companies act 1956 the memorandum of association means memorandum of association as originally framed or as altered from time to time in pursuance of any previous company's law or of this act any provisions contained in the moa will be void to the extent to which they are repugnant to the provisions of the companies act memorandum of association has two purposes first the intending investor who wants to put his money into the company shall know the activities in which his money would be invested by the company and the accompanying risk involved Memorandum of association provides a protection to the shareholders and other investors by ensuring that their money would be employed only for specified purposes. Secondly, any person dealing with the company shall know without reasonable doubt whether the contractual relation into which he contemplates entering with the company is one relating to a matter within its corporate objects the memorandum of association must be printed divided into paragraphs numbered consecutively and signed by each subscriber who must add his name address and description in the presence of at least one witness who is to attest the signatures we shall now discuss the various clauses of memorandum of association the memorandum of association includes six clauses namely the name clause 2 the situation clause 3 the object clause 4 the liability clause 5 the capital clause and 6 the association clause or subscription clause we shall discuss each clause in detail we will begin with the name clause first a company is a legal entity and it must have a name to establish its identity name clause in the memorandum of association confers protection against subsequent company registering in the same or closely similar name it secures to the company de facto monopoly of corporate trading under a particular name a company may have any name except a name which is identical with or which closely resembles the name of another company so as to deceive or mislead the prospective customer of one trading with the other a name which in the opinion of the central government is undesirable or will mislead the public and its use has been therefore prohibited by the government under the emblems and names prevention of improper use act 1950 
The last word of the name must be limited in case of public companies and private limited in case of private limited companies. It is not necessary that the word company should form part of the name. All the provisions mentioned under section 12 subsection 3 of the act should be adhered to by the company. After name clause, we shall now discuss situation clause. Memorandum of association must state the name of the state in which the registered office of the company is to be situated. It will fix up the domicile of the company. Registered office of a company is the place of its residence for the purpose of delivering or addressing any communication, service of any notice or process of court of law and for determining the question of jurisdiction in any legal action against the company. It is the place where all statutory books, records and registers of the company shall be maintained. We shall now study about the object clause. It is the most important clause in the memorandum of association. It defines and limits the scope of the operations of the company. It explains to the members the scope of the activity of the company where their capital will be employed. It gives protection to the shareholders by ensuring that the funds raised for specified businesses are not going to be risked anywhere else. The outside public dealing with the company is informed of the extent of powers of the company. A company can exercise only such powers as are either expressly stated therein or as many fairly be implied therefrom, including matters incidental or consequential to the powers so conferred. The objects of the company must be lawful and well defined. The objects must not be against the provision of the company's act. The memorandum should also state the objects of the company and not its powers. According to Section 4, Subsection C of the Companies Act, the memorandum of association of a company must state the objects for which the company is proposed to be incorporated and any matter considered necessary in furtherance thereof. In case of a company in existence, immediately before the commencement of the Companies Act 2013, main objects of the company to be pursued by the company on its incorporation and objects incidental or ancillary to the attainment of main objects. Other objects of the company not included in subclause 1. We shall now move on to Liability Clause. Liability Clause mentions the liability of members of the company. In case of a company limited by shares, Memorandum of Association must have a clause to the effect that liability of the members is limited to the extent of the amount of unpaid portion of the shares held by them. The MOA of a company limited by guarantee must state the amount with each member undertakes to contribute to the assets of the company in the event of its being wound up under Section 4, Subsection 1, Clause D of the Act. In a limited company, however, the liability of the directors or any director or manager, however, may be unlimited if so provided by the memorandum. Our next area of discussion would be capital clause. Memorandum of association of a limited company having share capital must state the amount of share capital with which 
the company is to be registered which is usually called authorized or nominal capital further division of registered share capital into shares of a fixed amount is also required to be given in the memorandum each subscriber must take at least one share and write opposite his name the number of shares he takes association clause this clause states that persons subscribing their signatures at the end of memorandum of association are desirous of forming themselves into an association in pursuance of the memorandum the moa must be signed by at least 7 or more persons in case of a public company and by at least 2 or more persons in case of a private company signatures shall be attested by witnesses there may be one witness for all signatures but one subscriber cannot be a witness to the signatures of the other full description address occupation etc of the subscribers and witnesses must be written in the case of a company having a share capital each subscriber is also required to take at least one share and to write opposite his name the number of shares he agrees to take subscribers are required to pay for these shares after the company is incorporated they must also sign articles of association of the company it is not necessary that all signatories should have any personal beneficial interest in the shares subscribed for by them they need not be independent or unconnected all of them may be nominees of a single person and their subscribing names may be merely a formality subscribers to memorandum of association however be competent to contract we shall now discuss the alteration of memorandum of association the memorandum of association can be altered only to the extent to which such alteration is necessary and in accordance with the provisions of companies act as provided under section 13 alteration in the name clause under section 13 subsection 2 of the companies act alteration in the name clause can be effected in following ways a company can change its name at any time in the course of its business by a passing a special resolution and b obtaining the approval of the central government in writing to the change however no approval from central government is required where the only change in the name of a company is the addition thereto or as the case may be the deletion therefrom of the word private consequent on the conversion of a public company into a private company or vice versa if by inadvertence or otherwise a company on its first registration or on its registration by a new name has been registered by a name identical with or too resembling with the name of another company previously registered it may by ordinary resolution and with the previous approval of the central government in writing change its name the new name must be notified to the registrar who will enter the new name in the register in the place of the former name and shall issue a fresh certificate of incorporation with the necessary alteration embodied therein the change of name shall be complete and effective only on the issue of such a certificate the registrar shall also make necessary alterations in the memorandum it is to be noted that change of name will neither affect any rights or obligation of the company nor render 
any legal proceedings by or against the company defective in any way. Alteration in Situation Clause Changes in the registered office of a company can be effected in three ways. These are number one, change of registered office outside the local limits of the city, town or village where such office is situated. Two, change of registered office from one city, town or village to another within the same state. The procedure is passing of a special resolution of the members of the company in a general meeting. Confirmation of the regional director, however, is required where the change is from jurisdiction of one registrar of the companies to the jurisdiction of another registrar of the companies. Number three, change of registered office from one state to another. Alteration in the objects clauses. In case of companies which have not raised money through prospectus, objects can be changed any time by passing of special resolution. A company which has raised money from public through prospectus and has any unutilized amount out of the money so raised shall not change its objects for which it raised the money through prospectus unless a special resolution is passed by the company through postal ballot and notice in respect of the resolution for altering the objects shall contain the following particulars. The money totally received. The total money utilized for the objects stated in the prospectus. The unutilized amount out of the money so raised through prospectus. The particulars of the proposed alteration or change in the objects. The justification for the alteration or change in the objects. The amount proposed to be utilized for the new objects. The estimated financial impact of the proposed alterations on the earnings and cash flow of the company. The other relevant information which is necessary for the members to take an informed decision on the proposed resolution and the place from where any interested person may obtain a copy of the notice of resolution to be passed. The details as may be prescribed in respect of such resolution shall also be published in the newspaper that is one in English and one in vernacular language which is in circulation at the place where the registered office of the company is situated and shall also be placed on the website of the company, if any, indicating therein the jurisdiction for such change. The dissenting shareholders shall be given an opportunity to exit by the promoters and shareholders having control in accordance with regulations to be specified by the Securities and Exchange Board. The Registrar shall register any alterations of the Memorandum of Association with respect to the objects of the company and certify the registration within a period of 30 days from the date of filing of the special resolution. Alteration in the liability clause. Ordinarily, it cannot be altered so as to make the liability of the members unlimited. However, with the authority of the Articles of Association, a company may pass special resolution altering liability clause of the Memorandum of Association so as to make the liability of directors or of any other director or manager unlimited. But in such a case, any person holds office as director or manager before such alteration 
shall not be liable until the expiry of his present term or unless he has accorded his consent to his liability becoming unlimited alterations which are likely to impose additional liability on a member or which are likely to compel a member to buy additional shares of the company after the date on which he became a member not be made except with the consent of the member concerned in writing however in case a company happens to be a club or any other association and the alteration requires the member to pay recurring or periodical subscriptions or charges at a higher rate the member will be bound by the alterations although he does not agree in writing to be bound by the alterations alteration of the capital clause alterations in the capital clause of the memorandum of association may be of two types number 1 as prescribed under section 61 of the act that is alteration of share capital and number 2 as prescribed under section 66 of the act that is reduction of share capital alteration of share capital a limited company having a share capital may alter its share capital by a increase its share capital by the issue of new shares b consolidate or subdivide its share capital into shares of larger or smaller denominations c convert its fully paid up shares into stock and reconvert that stock into fully paid up shares of any denomination and d cancel shares which have not been taken or agreed to be taken by any person and diminish the amount of its share capital by the amount of shares so cancelled a company can make these alterations by passing an ordinary resolution if it is authorized by the articles of association to do so such alterations must be notified and a copy of the resolutions filed with the registrar within 15 days of the date of passing of the resolution we will now study reduction of share capital to provide protection to interests of investors especially the creditors of companies reduction of share capital is permissible with strict stipulation of the law a company limited by shares or a company limited by guarantee and having a share capital may reduce its share capital by adopting any one of the following methods of reduction a extinguish or reduce the liability on any of its shares in respect of share capital not paid up b either with or without extinguishing or reducing liability on any of its shares cancel any paid up share capital which is lost or is unrepresented by available assets or c either with or without extinguishing or reducing liability on any of its shares pay off any paid up share capital which is in excess of the wants of the company let us now understand the procedure of reduction the articles of association of the companies must authorize the company to reduce its share capital in case the article of association does not authorize the company to do so the articles of the company have to be altered to authorize the companies for the same the company must pass a special resolution referred to as a resolution for reducing share capital the company has to apply by petition to the tribunal at present to the court since the tribunal has not yet been constituted for an order confirming the reduction where the proposed reduction 
of share capital involves either the diminution of liability in respect of unpaid share capital or the payment of any shareholder of any paid up share capital every creditor of the company entitled to any debt or claim against the company shall be entitled to object to the reduction in that case the company will have to satisfy the tribunal the court at present that either the consent of the creditors to the reduction has been obtained or his debt or claim has been discharged or has determined or has been secured the tribunal which is the court at present may make an order confirming the reduction on such terms and conditions as it may deem fit it has the power to direct the company to add to its name as the last words thereof the words and reduced for the period specified in the order and or require the company to publish reasons for reduction to give proper information to the public the company has to file with the registrar a copy of the order of the tribunal the court at present along with minutes of the share capital so reduced the registrar shall register the same and issue a certificate of registration in the following cases reduction of share capital does not require sanction of the tribunal or court namely number 1 forfeiture of shares number 2 surrender of shares number 3 cancellation of unissued capital also known as diminution of share capital number 4 buy back of share capital 5 redemption of preference shares and 6 purchase by the company of shares of a member under an order of the tribunal or company law board at present for prevention of operation and mismanagement we shall now analyze the difference between reduction of capital and diminution of capital reduction of capital means amounts to reduction of issued subscribed or paid up capital diminution of capital implies amounts to reduction of the unissued share capital reduction requires passing of special resolution whereas for diminution it requires passing of ordinary resolution reduction of capital may adversely affect the interest of creditors whereas the interest of creditors is not affected when diminution is done balance sheet of the company is affected when reduction is carried out however in case of diminution of capital it does not affect the balance sheet of the company and lastly for reduction of capital no confirmation from tribunal or court is needed whereas for diminution of capital confirmation of the tribunal or court is required we shall discuss alteration of rights of shareholders as given under section 48 of the act where the share capital of a company is divided into different classes of shares the rights attached to the shares of any class may be varied with the consent in writing of the holders of not less than 3/4 of the issued shares of that class or with the sanction of a special resolution passed at a separate meeting of the holders of the issued shares of that class a if provision with respect to such variation is contained in the memorandum of association or articles of association of the company or b in the absence of any such provision in the memorandum or articles if such variation is not prohibited by the terms of issue of the shares of that class dissenting members holding not less than 
of the issued shares of the class affected may within 21 days after the passing of the resolution or consent given apply to the tribunal or court for the cancellation of the variation if such an application is made the variation will have no effect until it is confirmed by the tribunal or the court let us now move on to discuss the doctrine of ultra virus ultra means beyond and virus means pars memorandum of association of a company defines the pars of a company any act done contrary to or in excess of the scope of the activity of the company as laid down by its memorandum of association is ultra virus the company that is beyond the legal powers and authority of the company and shall be wholly void and not binding on the company acts ultra virus the company can neither be legalized nor ratified even with the unanimous consent of all members of the company the doctrine tries to protect the interest of the investors and creditors a company only has the capacity to do those acts which fall within its objects as set out in its memorandum of association or are reasonably incidental to the attainment of such objects acts of a company may also be ultra virus the articles or ultra virus the powers of the directors acts ultra virus the articles can be valid and made binding upon the company by altering the articles of association with special resolution at a general meeting alteration of articles of association with retrospective effect if to the benefit of the company shall be valid all act beyond the scope of the powers of the directors may also be ratified by the general body of shareholders however the doctrine of ultra virus should not be unreasonably understood and applied it does not restrain a company from doing such things which are reasonably fair and incidental to its objects or which it is authorized to do under the company's act there is a difference between objects and powers powers are not to be stated in the memorandum even if they are stated they can be used only to achieve the objects of the company in no case they can become independent objects by themselves let us now summarize what we have learned in this module memorandum of association is the main document of a company which defines its objectives it has six clauses namely the name clause the situation clause the object clause the liability clause the capital clause and the association clause a company can make alterations in its memorandum of association by following a prescribed procedure the doctrine of ultra virus implies that any act done contrary to or in excess of the scope of the activity of the company as laid down by the memorandum of association is void and cannot be adopted by a company doctrine of ultra virus provides protection to the investors of the company